We are doing UHV3 and we are on the second module. We were on lecture seven and talking about right understanding. So when we say right understanding, we have been using that term for a long time. What exactly does it mean? We say right understanding is seeing the reality the way it really is. So right now we may focus on what it seems like to us based on our own assumptions. But really to be able to see it directly, to see that part which is universal, that part which is continuous, that part which is definite, which is essentially to see the essence, the base of this reality. And so we have to look at the natural characteristic of any unit. That means the participation of that unit in the larger order. We need to look at the innateness or the self-organization of any unit and the coexistence, the submergence of the unit in space. When we are talking about the natural characteristic of the participation, it is in terms of seeing the relationship of one unit with another unit. So when I see a relationship, then it is but natural for me to participate in that relationship. The innateness or self-organization, understanding of that has to do with the harmony, seeing the harmony, seeing the self-organization in a unit, any unit. And of course, like we said, the coexistence is to be able to see the submergence in space, that all units are submerged in space. All this is possible through the activities that are there within myself, which seem hidden at this time, but which we can awaken to. These are the higher activities within the self, which we are not awakened to, not aware of, but we have the potential to awaken to them. And these activities are the activity of contemplation, which essentially makes us aware of the relationship of one unit with another unit and our role, our participation in the relationship. And as I see, you know, with expansion, I see my participation in a larger and larger and larger framework. When it comes to the activity of understanding within the self, this activity of understanding helps us to see the self-organization that is there in every unit in this existence. the harmony that is there in every unit and all the um, units in nature we can see are in harmony with one another. So through the activity of understanding, I can see this innateness, this self-organization, this harmony in every unit. And ultimately, with the activity of realization, I can see the coexistence, the submergence of all the units 
in space. So if you look at, you know, when we say right understanding, understanding the entire existence, the way it is, it seems like a lot. It seems like, how is it possible? It's too many things. How can you see? Everything looks so different. And if I have to see it, study every plant, every animal, every organism, it seems like a humongous task. But really, if you see the focus on understanding, because whatever is, whatever you can just see directly through the gross body, there you will see a lot of variety, a lot of change, a lot of things that seem different. But if you look at this existence through the higher activities of the self, what is truly trying to understand the reality, then you find that there aren't that many things to understand. So we talked of nature being for the purpose of understanding and for seeing, you know, based on what we discussed yesterday, but I will come back to that, certain characteristics. So based on those, we, do, we you know, sort of characterized nature into four orders. Now in these four orders, if you look at what is superficial, what is changing, there is a lot. But let us focus on what is definite, what is unchanging, what is universal, because that is what we need to understand, really. That is what you cannot see through the gross eyes. That has to be understood directly through the self. So you have to understand the innateness. That means the self-organization in the four orders. So that is four things. You have to understand the nature, the natural characteristic, or the participation of that unit, of that, you know, of the units in a particular order. And since there are four orders, there are four of those. When it comes to coexistence, there is only, you know, for all the units, all the orders, they are submerged in space. So that is one thing we have to understand. So if you look at it, nine things are there to understand. The innateness of the four orders, the natural characteristics of the four orders, and the coexistence. This we spoke of yesterday. We can go to the next slide. We also said that when we are seeing and we have to see through the self directly. So we can see from different levels through the self. So if I am seeing through the lowest activity within the self, the selecting tasting part, then my focus is on the form, what a unit looks like, what is its shape, what is its size, what is its color, and so on. And my main focus is that. So for instance, in the human being, we said that if my focus is on the form, I may be focused on what the face looks like, what the body looks like, what is the color of the skin, and so on. And my whole, um, you know, what I pay attention to may be just that. So that would be focus on the form. If you look at the property, property means the effect of one unit on another unit. So every unit has some impact 
on every other unit. Every unit recognizes its relationship with every other unit and fulfills that relationship. Meaning, there is some impact of every unit on every other unit. This effect of one unit on another unit, you can see as the property of a unit. So, for instance, if you're looking at the human being, there is some problem in the body, say, disharmony in the body. There is some stomach pain, stomach irritation, something like that. Now, this has some impact on the self, isn't it? You have pain somewhere in the body. Does it impact you? Yes or no? You can put in the chat. Does it have some impact on you or no? If there is pain in the body. Yes. Yes. So this is the effect of one unit on another. In this case, the effect of the body on the self. Similarly, the self can have an impact on the body, isn't it? So if the self is thinking of something else, now not only is the pain forgotten, but the impact of what the self is thinking, what the self is feeling, can come on the body. Like, for instance, you are very tense and anxious. Something has to go right today and your whole attention is on that. Oh, it must go right, it must go right. You are very tense about some whatever. Say you have a meeting, you have some event to go to. Something has to happen and you are tense about, anxious about the outcome of it. And you find that your heart rate has increased. So the heart rate is in the body, the anxiety is in the self. So the impact of the anxiety in the self is showing up in the body as increase in heart rate. Can we see this? Yes, no? Can you put in the chat? Are you able to see this? Yes. So any impact of one property, uh, any impact of one unit on another unit is what we are terming the property of that unit. So when you are seeing through the sensation, whatever is the form, there, what are you seeing through? You are taking the help of the body. You are seeing through the sense organs of the body. So the body is definitely involved. But body is not seeing any form by itself. You are, you know, interpreting that form as something. So there you will see that when you are seeing through this selecting tasting part, you are using the body and the self, both. But when you're looking at the property, the impact of one unit on another unit, right? To some extent, you may be using some part of the sensation, but when you are looking at, you know, how it impacts, what kind of role it has, there you are largely doing it through the self. You're analyzing. You're seeing the impact. But beyond this two, this form and the property, 
we said that what we need to see is what is the essence, what is existential, what is that which is definite, which is unchanging, which is universal. So we said we need to look at the natural characteristic, that is the participation of any unit in the larger order, that we can see through the activity of contemplation within the self the innateness or the self-organization of any unit that we can see through the activity of understanding and the coexistence or the submergence of any unit in space that we can see through the activity of realization. So our focus is going to be on these, what is definite, what is universal and what is continuous. And our focus here will be largely on the human being, since we were talking about the human being. Look at this chart. You can see in the first column, you can see we're talking of four different orders. The physical order, the bio order, the animal order, and the human order. In the second uh, column, you have examples of the units of those orders. So in the physical order, you have soil, you have metal, you have rock, you have so many, you know, these substances. All the metals that you can think of, all the chemical uh, substances that are there. So this would include air, this would include water, and so on. In the second um, column, second row, we're talking of the bio order. So this includes all the plants, the trees, the grasses, and so on. Third column, we talk of the animal order, which includes animals, birds, and so on. And in the fourth one, our focus is on the human being. Now, if you look at the third column, we're talking about the activity. So in the physical order, there is some formation, deformation that is going on all the time. What does that mean? Something is being formed something is being deformed. So in the previous workshop, you may have come across that example we gave of iron. So iron is something from the physical order. You leave it outside. It rusts. So something is being formed, something is being deformed. Iron oxide is formed and so on. So like that you will find in every physical order, any unit of the physical order, some formation, some deformation is going on. If you look at the bio order, there is formation, deformation already going on in the, any unit of bio order, plus there is added activity of respiration. Something is being taken in, something is being put out. So in plants, in trees, you find during the daytime, they are taking in carbon dioxide, giving out oxygen. This respiration is happening. So in every plant, you will find this. This activity is there. When it comes to the animal, now you have not just the body, but you also have the self. So what are the activities? The body is much like the plant body. So there is formation, deformation. 
and some respiration. This is going on in the body. In the self, there is, um, so that is in the body. When it comes to the self of the animal, the activity of selecting tasting is the one that is most prominent in the animal. So the animal is largely, the animal self is largely busy with the activities of selecting tasting. When it comes to the human being, we said that we have desire, thought, expectation going on and in us all the time. And we can see this. We can see our thoughts, we can see our expectations, we can see our feelings. And we can see that this is going on within us all the time. So this means we are using the activities of imaging, which has to do with the desire, the feeling of analyzing and selecting, uh, analyzing and um, comparing, which has to do with thinking, thought, and with the activity of selecting, tasting, the expectation part. So all this is going on within the self. This is already happening. Besides this, in the human self, there is also potential for understanding. The potential is there. We may or may not have reached that potential, but it is there in every human being. This has to do with the activity. Now looking at the innateness, the innateness of every unit or, you know, when we look at the orders specifically. So if you look at the physical order, it is innate, existence is innate, it is there, it exists. If you look at the plant or bio order, there is existence and growth. So all plants, all trees, they grow. Any plant that is there, any tree, any grass, it's growing. You see the growth happen. You will not find any plant, any tree which doesn't grow. Of course, if you cut down the tree and you put aside the wood, now it will not grow. But now it is not a part of the bio order anymore. It is now a part of the physical order. You have cut it away from that growing tree. So any plant, any tree, any unit of the bio order, you find it exists and it grows, that is innate to it. In the case of the animal body, it is the same. And so also in the human body, that it exists and it grows. But in addition to the body, now you have another unit in the animal and the human being, which is the self. In the self of the animal, there is a will to live. This is innate. Every animal has a will to live. In the human being, in the human self, not only does the self have a will to live, but has a will to live with continuous happiness. And the potential for having this continuous happiness is there in the self through right understanding, right feeling, right thought. This we already said. Now, if you look at the natural characteristic, natural characteristic has to do with the relationship, with the participation. So, if you look at the physical order, some composition, decomposition, something is going on. Even though you may not see any activity outside, but something is going on. Some atoms, some molecules, they are coming together. 
participating in some reaction and something else is happening some something is getting formed something is getting deformed something is getting composed something is getting decomposed if you look at the bio order in the bio order in addition to this there is also a characteristic of nurture or worsen that means now supposing you have two units one may get nurtured the other may get worsened for instance you take um, a fruit this is you know or you take a uh, some um, any plant now the effect of that plant if you see you know the impact on the body you eat it the plant gets worsened or you know breaks down the body gets nurtured so like that in the animal body also it is the same you have this participation in the form of composition decomposition nurturing and worsening and so also in the human body when it comes to the self of the animal you say it is cruel or non cruel of course we are giving those terms cruel and non cruel so you have animals which by design are what we call cruel say some carnivorous animals like the tiger like the lion and so on and then there are animals which are what we call non cruel like the cow for instance that is a characteristic of them when it comes to the human being what is natural what is um our characteristic is this that when you know if we have the understanding we have you know perseverance bravery generosity kindness beneficence compassion in i in the self so this possibility is there but we must understand it we must be able to see it then we can it will show up in our expression if you look at this last column the inheritance inheritance means how it continues generation after generation so in the physical order it has it is constitution based meaning whatever the constitution that same constitution it will continue same way so you have air you have water it continues the same way generation after generation it is constitution based as long as the constitution is the same it continues if you look at the bio order it is seed based so if the seed is okay if the seed is a certain way then it can continue generation after generation when we don't understand this and we modify the seeds now we have hampered this cycle of inheritance going generation after generation so you'll notice that in the uh, papayas in the old times you would you know cut open a papaya and you found zillions of lots of seeds in it 
and even one seed can give rise to one whole big papaya tree isn't it so many seeds so now this continues papaya tree is formed from it and papaya fruit and so on then somewhere we changed that we modified that now we have papayas where you have different color it has changed different color from outside different color from inside taste is different and you will find these days the papayas that you open up you will find hardly any seed one or two seeds and these kind of seeds you grow them it doesn't continue generation after generation it stops within two or three times then you have to go buy more seed and plant more and so on so there you have tampered with it but otherwise naturally you know if the seed was allowed to continue it will continue generation after that similarly for the animal the inheritance is breed based as long as the breed is maintained this will continue generation after generation so you can see that today we say you know drink milk from pure breeds pure breeds the the quality of the milk is good for the human body and so on but somewhere if that breed is tampered with tampered with then this these qualities change so if you have today you have um, we say right a2 milk drink a2 milk which is milk from pure breeds like the indian uh, they see cow pure swiss cow and so on but if you are drinking say from jersey cow the breed has changed the quality of the milk has changed so the characteristics change if you look at the human being this continuity generation after generation has to do with education sanskar doesn't have to do with birth in a family two people born in the same family may be able to you know have even though their potential is the same may not reach that potential and the basis for reaching the potential and continuing that is education and sanskar which is why this effort is being made to put things into education and now we can also see our role our participation in that Uh, ma'am uh, we were discussing some time before that uh, every unit will have some effect some impact on every other unit mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> body if there is any change in the body or disturbance then it will impact on self as well mm-hmm. so uh, what i was thinking uh, by learning previous sessions that if self pay attention towards that then only it will Im- the body disturbance in the body will impact me is this correct or otherwise also it will impact but i am not at paying attention ha ah, that's what the impact is still there but i am not paying attention so i don't see it i am mm-hmm. not aware of it but the impact is there isn't it acha abhi bhi so many things are happening in the body Huh. and it is having some impact but we may not be able to see it because we are busy with something else mm-hmm. isn't it okay. we give that example of uh, say a soccer player or somebody who is playing gets injured while playing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. injured means it is now obviously big injury the skin is torn open there is blood flowing some impact is there in the body isn't it mm-hmm. it will also have some effect on the self but if the self is not paying attention to it it is not aware of it so while playing 
the person is not even aware and continues to play. The effect is not overpowering the self. The effect, you know, it, it is up to the self to notice or not to notice. But the effect will be there, no? Uh, uh, just now, Didi, we just talked about this pain that we may or may not pay attention. So, so there are people who are in pain, but they do not, you know, they do not say it. They just bear it. And only when it reaches the extreme, then that they say. And some people are like, the, even with a slight, slight pain, they will be like, oh, I'm having this much pain. So in these two types of people, the self, is it the self which is different? Different in the sense? I mean, depends on is... what kind of meaning I am giving to it, no? Okay. So, supposing I give meaning to it that, okay, this is something, some disharmony in the body, I need to take care of it. So, I will take care of it. I will do whatever is necessary to take care of the disharmony in the body. But supposing I give meaning to it, oh my God, this is something very drastic and maybe it's cancer. And if I think I am the body, I think I am only dying. What is happening? Now I give, I've given a different meaning to it. I may shout and scream. I may panic. So many things. No? So it is how the self interprets it. Because the self is deciding what to do. The expression outside or not expression outside. That is one part of it. Also within me, what is going on? Expression is only a reflection of what is going on within, isn't it? So the self is same for both. Same the expression. Means what? Uh, same, same means like um, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean by same? Uh, I mean you that have a they both. Self, I have a different self, isn't it? Yeah. So the way self is responding. So that is different. Okay. Yes. Based on whatever I interpret the external situation or on the body or whatever it is, I give some meaning to it. So I respond a certain way or I react a certain way. Isn't it? Yeah. And all that goes on inside me. And then I choose to express it through the body or not express it through the body, but it is still going on inside me, isn't it? So one person with that same hurt takes it very calmly that, okay, there is a little disharmony in the body and I can correct it with this, this method. So I do it. Another person may be totally anxious and in panic that uh, something terrible has happened. Now what to do? Because we are giving a different meaning to it. Can you see that? So this, yes, yes. So the self is responding in different ways in the yeah. two human beings. Yeah. I was uh, actually thinking uh, plants have so many uh, properties. You no, know, they give fruits. They have so many healing properties. There are so many things. Then how can we say that they have no life? Depends on what do you mean by life. What does life mean to you? What does it mean? You're saying fruit. Is that something that you call life? And for us, that's Didi, something that you're calling life. Did it from childhood also? No, like uh, we put dia to tulsi and tea, all that we have been doing. So our preconditioning is also like that. <laughs> Preconditioning mm -hmm. is one thing. I, we are talking of trying to understand things. So if you are saying, if you are calling life that the plant grows, then okay, it has life. But if you are so, saying, does it have self? Uh, that, uh, now there is question mark. Hmm. Isn't it? Yes. That, that is your question? Yes, yes, exactly. So does it have a self or not? What is the characteristic thing we say about a self? How do you detect if a unit has a self? 
uh, imagination thought expectations all these things are there at one no, no that is there in us yes in the animal self they want to protect and they want to live they they But want to how protect do you, how do you see that how do you decide if a unit has a self you see the in the behavior you see assumption the role of assumption you know if the self is there in a unit you will see assumption playing a role in the behavior mm. so instance, that's how you can train animals see Mm. you have an animal mm. you have a street dog mm. that street dog has you know uh, doesn't know you or anything mm -hmm. you pass by that street that street dog doesn't do anything mm -hmm. now you give it some food next day third day he comes after you mm. every day you give it some food the dog starts coming after you it will wag its tail mm. isn't it yes now it has assumed something no? mm. yes sir so it assumes and comes after you it has the choice isn't it the self mm. has a choice yes. based on the assumption mm. but yes, tomorrow sir. if you take a stick you don't give it food for couple of days it will stop coming after you now it mm -hmm. changes its behavior it doesn't um wag its tail maybe it barks at you when you walk past with a you know threatening stick mm -hmm. now the behavior has changed based on the assumption isn't it yes do you see this behavior in plants no no their behavior is very definite mm. if you want to call it behavior yes so if you have a plant it always bends towards the sunlight recognition and fulfillment this we are saying from the beginning no mm -hmm. there is recognition and fulfillment in every unit in nature so that doesn't qualify for there being a self in that unit isn't it yes. because this is definite this doesn't change plants always turn towards the sun you change the direction of the plant you put it somewhere else again it will turn towards the sun it doesn't have choice in the matter it is definite it is already pre decided for it there's no choice can yes. you see the difference Yes. Yes. Does it answer your question? Yes. Yes, Mr. Yes. But <laughs> our preconditions are so much, you know, every thing about plants that they have direct connect with the and uh, so many things we have been imagining and about plants. Incidentally, whatever you say, na, we do puja for this plant, that plant. You will notice that all of these that you do puja to, they have some benefit. to the human body mm -hmm. so human beings have started perhaps with the i'm just reflecting on it perhaps that nobody should at least harm these because this is something useful for the human body so we might have started doing puja yes. for it okay, by yes, protecting yes. protecting uh, giving them an important <laughs> place to be protected and so on yes ma'am uh, in the animal order uh, they have their own uh, innate nature uh, for example a cow a desi cow uh, uh, it has their own uh, unique uh, properties uh, if i say uh, while doing that breeding uh, changing like a jersey cow now uh, it is not a, a natural uh, we are doing that uh, some changes in that uh, cow the, that we called it is a jersey cow so while doing all this uh, we are changing that uh, uh, the properties are we can say that the product which uh, we are using like a milky uh, whatever so those things also changes it will be adversely impact on that uh, the using people no ma mm -hmm. uh, 
yeah uh, that we have to understand uh, before we are thinking to uh, change that natural existing things like maybe a plant or animal true true see when uh -huh. we don't understand uh -huh. what is really happening here uh -huh. then we think that this is all you know something that i can dominate over i can change i can do things now uh -huh. we are making watermelon which is yellow uh -huh. we are trying to change the form trying to change so many uh -huh. things the taste yeah ma'am things and to our liking but yeah. without being without uh -huh. awareness of what is what else we may be tampering with isn't it yeah like yeah. the inheritance part now it cannot continue in the same way generation after generation uh -huh. so we used to have so many varieties of rice in india now only uh -huh. a handful are there why uh -huh. because we couldn't we didn't preserve the seed if you preserve the seed in nature there is so much variety uh -huh. but if you tamper with the seed and you you know don't take you know, protect the seed then how will that continue generation after generation so you have so many things so many plants that become extinct you look at cucumber cucumber used to be a certain way a small mm -hmm. very sweet mm -hmm. cucumber mm -hmm. now you don't find it anywhere you can't find it mm -hmm. in the bigger cities you mm -hmm. will not find it now you have those big hybrid cucumbers or what they call european cucumbers and so on and these are all hybrid things you are not finding that original one but not necessary that these will have the same qualities the same characteristics as those isn't it so we don't know what we are doing really like the seedless uh, fruits uh, we want like <laughs> yeah. those things. yeah people are growing can you believe people are growing watermelon in the shape of a square so that it is easier to transport these watermelons from one place to another in a truck mm -hmm. so we are doing things based on our own conveniences without paying attention to what else we are doing damage isn't it yes yes that's yes. why understanding is so necessary if we understand all the units if we understand all the orders and how things go then mm. we will try to live with what what is already there rather than keeping on trying to change it just for our taste or just to see the color or the form or something else is it yeah is how we are able to identify the self in any order so mm. uh, you said that it's like uh, i mean we are discussing this from the workshop one that is based on assumption mm -hmm. so it kind of uh, associative learning which is um, possible like say for example today that paulo's experiment also like uh, done with the dog that when the bell rings you will given the given the food mm -hmm. and then um, the sal uh, salivation happens like when the bell rings so uh, there is a assumption in the self like uh, that when the bell rings i will get food and so i will respond accordingly mm -hmm. so uh, are we saying that i mean it's kind of a associative learning it's a conditioning I mean, you can call it whatever you want yeah yeah essentially this is what it is no you assume something hmm. based on that you respond or react or whatever so you but have that, a choice in that response and that yeah. choice is based okay. on whatever meaning you are giving to it whatever you have assumed about it okay. this choice you don't find in plants it is definite yeah but there are many i mean uh, see i mean um, so there are certain things like uh, in farming uh, there are practices where farmers actually don't give water to plants okay and then um, for certain period they leave them as it they are then uh, they give water 
and then because of that there is a response that you know out of survival there is a lot of i mean the explanation is but there are lots of fruit then because the pran respond uh, out of survival instinct this we, we are giving this meaning uh, aren't we giving this meaning that this is but, a survival instinct and this and that but it, i mean there is there has to i mean there is a response that there is a different response right in the yeah, sense but that is a definite thing that is a very definite thing that will always be the case you can't change that the plant can't change that that way you will say that the plant root goes in the soil and it mm. is taking whatever it needs so it is not choosing that's how it is whatever the plant needs it's getting but, through the soil but if we i mean see if we say that then at a different level of abstraction in the in a sense if there is a definiteness in the response i mean i can understand what you are saying that there is a will shown and the associative memory if it is shown so uh, i mean this this is also i can call a response like animal right because i have conditioned it so it will respond like whenever i take a food it will can respond you that assumption huh can you change that respond be, response like can it be different at different times yeah so it's is more of is the self able to see this happening in the other order like like the direct observation like yes, we are what we are saying able... this is what we are saying that through the self we have the potential of being able to see everything in this existence the way it is hmm. but hmm. we have to reach that potential no yeah yeah this is the whole effort we are doing so what i would suggest is we don't hmm. have to believe this we don't have to try to be convinced about this keep it correct. open for yourself correct correct keep correct. it open yeah. explore it yeah when we see it we see it sure having this will to live with continuous happiness in us which is innate to us you won't find any self who doesn't want to live with continuous happiness so this is something that is innate in us how to go about it we said is through right understanding right feeling and right thought and if we have that we have these other qualities characteristics no the perseverance kindness generosity benevolence con- compassion and so on how can we continue it generation after generation through to the next generation and the generation after that it is through human education and sanskar so this is significant this is what we need to get to and for this now we can see our participation our role we are talking of the natural characteristic our participation in the larger order so what we are doing all of this work that we are doing all of the workshops that are happening this is for that to bring about this human education and sanskar so that that understanding is possible generation after generation for every child so that every child can live with that continuity of happiness so now you can see a slightly bigger picture slightly bigger frame even that little work that you might be doing as a volunteer in this process that is your participation which is very significant in this whole cycle of things so now whatever volunteer work you are doing think of this that this is what you are working for for the continuity of happiness generation after generation through human education and sanskar but we'll talk more on this tomorrow